entering this phase in your life is difficult enough, isn't it? Contemplating your death and saying goodbyes and making preparations, but doing that in a, in a pandemic when you're separated from your family, yeah. As humans, we grieve in groups and we prepare for death in groups and we support each other in groups. And actually now, people are unable to do that. Death in this country is so often taboo, a shadow in the distance from which we avert our collective gaze. Those who work at the Princess Alice Hospice in Surrey and the 260 other hospices in Britain walk into that shadow head on, day after day. This hospice alone helps a thousand people in its community as well as its residents. Every aspect of its work has been touched by COVID-19. Hello, this is Paula, one of our healthcare assistants at Princess Alice Hospice, just gowning up to go into one of our patients. So she can see she has a um, gown, apron, gloves, face mask, and she's going to be putting on goggles. This is really not the way that we um, are used to dealing with our patients at Princess Alice Hospice. Princess Alice has experienced a coronavirus outbreak. Like care homes, once it's in, it's a risk to patients and staff alike. But the challenges here, dealing with people dying, their families, and those precious end-of-life moments, are unique. As humans, we grieve in groups, and we prepare for death in groups, and we support each other in groups. And actually now, people are unable to do that. So it's about how we create connections and actually support people to feel connected to the person that's dying, although they're not physically here. And how do you do that? Often through, uh, it could be uh, special objects, letters. An example, last week I had a gentleman who was dying. His grandson wrote him a letter and I went in, in PPE, and read that letter to him, the man that was dying, and told him that his family were thinking about him, that they loved him, and they were sorry they couldn't be here. How did that older gentleman take that? He was unconscious. I don't know if he could hear me, but I spoke to him and I told him his family loved him. Sylvia and Alice's husband and father, Justin, is a patient at the hospice. He has brain cancer. A few weeks ago, he contracted COVID-19. Normally, the hospice would surround him with family, friends, to make this time as precious as it can be, no longer. We feel acutely that he can't actually see them anymore. And he can only see us with masks and gowns. And, you know, that's, that's no not... substitute for, you know, facial expressions and... Yeah, it's, it's changed how we interact with him a little. Yes, it has. We feel quite distanced from him. What's that like, ha having to sort of communicate with him through masks and gowns? Hard. Yeah, it is difficult. Yeah. What's it like having to tell either a patient or a family member that they can't see their relative or they, can't, they have to see them in a circumscribed way? Yeah, really difficult. That's probably been, um, yeah, that, and not only for me, I think for the team, they've really struggled because they are fearful in a way they don't want them to come in, but they also want to connect people because that's what we do. You know, we put our arms not around the patient, but around families. So it's, um, it's, it's been difficult. Dealing with the virus has been very difficult and I'd lost my resilience for a night before I knew I'd have to go in and work with the patients but when I was in there um, just remember cleaning the patient's teeth and him thanking me and opening the door into the gardens that he could see out into the sunshine. Dina is one of those patients yeah. dying, but who has had COVID-19, receiving that sort of care. The disease has placed immense, bewildering stress on those already at a point in life beyond the imaginings of most of us. I'm not a, I wasn't a human being. Because of coronavirus? Mm. It knocked you down. Knocked your lung down totally. In what way didn't you feel like a human being? Well, now I can talk. Previously, 
I can't read it, I can't talk. I can't eat. And you had to be ventilators? Mm. That must have been really unpleasant. 24 hours. You must have been quite scared. It was. We did talk about that. We did talk about that. At the time? Did you think you were going to die? Yeah. Hello Jo, this is one of our staff nurses um, behind the door in our isolated patient's room. The calculation of risk here is different to care homes. Hospice management must balance the danger of transmission to family and staff alongside the horror of patients dying alone and the mental scars of those left behind. <laughs> Protective equipment can help, but this nearly forgotten part of our care infrastructure is struggling for supply. Uh, you know, we're a charity and we only get 20% funding from the NHS, so if we were to upscale and we could and expand here, we, that would need to be backed up with um, resources and not just money, we would need staff and most importantly we would need PPE um, because that is the sort of limiting factor here. I mean, we wouldn't have got through the last few weeks, we wouldn't have beds open, I wouldn't be admitting patients with COVID if it wasn't for the community. They have kept us supplied with PPE, they have rallied round, they are making us gowns as we speak and scrubs and raiding labs and schools and dentistry and uh, uh, laboratories. And I find that really shocking in this day and age. We've had one emergency supply 17 days after our outbreak, and we don't know when the next one's coming. Hospices are being asked to pick up so much slack. The government has pledged more direct support and money, but they'll still have a fraction of the resources and thought devoted to the health service. These remarkable people specialize in helping those on their journey to death. In this pandemic, especially if it lingers, we will need what they know, what they do more than ever. That ultimate taboo cannot stand. What are you hoping for now, Dina? Standing up. <laughs> I haven't been standing up for three weeks. Hoping to standing up tomorrow. Little by little, eh? Those are girls, you had to make effort, don't you? <laughs> 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 <laughs>